Flank steak is the boneless, skinless chicken breast of the beef world. It cooks quickly, there are no bones to fuss with, and you can use it to make everything from fajitas to stir fries. But cooked as just a steak, well, it's got some real problems to deal with. Flank steak has a very distinctive grain running right through that muscle, and when cooked, it buckles. That creates a thick end and a thin end, and those cook unevenly. Mm -hmm. And it tastes like an old rubber tire. <laughs> <laughs> which is not good. But today we're gonna get flank steak its due and I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Moving on to our patient here. It weighs between one and a half to one and three quarter pounds. And one of the problems that we have with flank steak is fitting it into the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even a 12 inch skillet, it's going to be kind of a problem fitting that into the pan. It'll start creeping up the sides. Eventually it shrinks, but we wanna get it all into the pan at the same time. So this is one of the most genius things I've ever heard of. We're going to cut it so that it fits. <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> so I'll take a sharp chef's knife. I'll go right across the grain and then lengthwise. There we go. So we do want to add some seasonings to this. We want seasonings to penetrate the meat, but we also want to help out with browning on the exterior because it is a relatively thin piece of meat. So we want to brown quickly before it cooks all the way through. So I'm going to take some paper towels and just pat it dry. You can also do this while the steak is in one piece. And now I'm going to make a little bit of a seasoning mix. All right, I have two teaspoons of kosher salt and they've got nice large grains. It's gonna be easy to rub this onto the meat. I'm going to mix a teaspoon of sugar. That's really going to help with browning. And a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Easy to mix together and then I'll rub it on all sides of the steak. All right, and I'll just press this on so it adheres to the meat. Flip it over. All right, once again, press it all in. Now I'm going to transfer this to a rimmed baking sheet. I put a wire rack right on there. It's going to elevate the steaks so that some heat can get underneath them and also help them cook. Now we're not gonna sear these right on the stove top. I was top. just gonna say, <laughs> what's your game plan here? <laughs> yes, it's a very large skillet. <laughs> Now we're gonna bake these in the oven, and I say bake because we're not roasting them. It's a really, really low oven, 225. And the reason is, is we don't want a super blast of heat to start and shrink these flank steaks up because they will buckle. And also it'll squeeze out all that moisture from the inside of the steaks. Now the oven is also going to help us later on with browning. It's going to dry out the exterior of the steaks. Later on, there won't be any moisture on there that we have to get rid of before we sear. Now, since these are going into such a low oven and there are four steaks and we want to make sure that they all cook pretty evenly, well, instead of going in there every few minutes with an instant read thermometer, mm -hmm. I'm going to use, love these, a yes. probe thermometer. Ah. And I'll go ahead and just place this right in the center of one of these steaks. Because if you're opening the oven door all the time, that oven's already pretty low. If you lose all that heat, you could extend the cooking time of the steak by a long time. A lot long, that's right. And you'd end up with pretty much dried steaks instead mm -hmm. of cooked steaks. I'm gonna put these in the oven. I'll keep this right on the side and we'll know exactly when these reach 120 degrees. All right, the alarm says it's 120. They and still look raw on the outside. They do. They're not too pretty at this point. It's like very thick beef jerky right now. It is. Now we are going to sear. So I've been heating up two tablespoons of vegetable oil over medium high heat. I'm gonna wait for that to come up to the point where it just starts to smoke. In the meantime, we're going to make a compound butter. Mm. So I've got three tablespoons of unsalted butter, softened. Now I just like to mash it up a little bit before I add all my ingredients. A tablespoon of minced chives, a little bit of Dijon mustard, that's two teaspoons, a half a teaspoon of grated lemon zest, and a teaspoon of lemon juice. Ooh, that one tastes good. Mm-hmm, nice and light. Mustard, lemon, and chives. And butter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. Set that aside, let's get back to the skillet. And we can see that the oil, She's at a shimmer. So now we can go ahead and place these steaks in, and then I'm gonna flip them every minute. And that's to ensure that they don't overcook and to develop a really nice brown crust. All right, we've passed the first minute. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over. Oh, those steaks are starting <laughs> to look a whole lot better. And as you mentioned, they are curling on that one side. Mm -hmm. and by flipping them every minute, that's gonna fix the curl. Another minute, another flipping time. Mm. 
So the flank steak has long muscle fibers that shrink up when they come in contact with the hot pan, which causes the steak to buckle. Once the steak is buckled, it's no longer flat, and that means you won't get even browning. By flipping the meat every minute, the muscle fibers on both sides of the steak shrink at the same rate, thereby reducing the buckling effect. Mmm, this should be our last flip over. These steaks look amazing. <laughs> All right, let's turn the heat off. These are coming out of the skillet. <laughs> oh, yes. Boy, those are really gorgeous. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. I mean, we eat flank steak all the time at our house. I don't think I've ever made them look that beautiful before. So we're going to leave these for about 10 minutes so that they can cool down so we can eat them. And also, it's just going to allow any juices in the meat to redistribute. They are still there. I counted them before <laughs> we waited 10 minutes. And I'm proud of you because there's still four mm -hmm. on that sheet pan. Yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> I came close to taking a little nibble. I bet you did. Well, we are going to go ahead and slice into these. I'm just going to slice open two, one for you, one for me, and we'll come back and eat the other two. <laughs> so now I'm going to add a little bit of butter, about one and a half teaspoons. I'll spread it out a little oh, bit. Oh, oh, yes. Now you're talking. Oh, butter on steak is just the best idea. So I'm going to slice these against the grain very, very thinly, as thinly as I can. That is perfectly cooked steak. Come to mama. Oh, no gray band. No. All pink in the middle drenched with butter. Hello. <laughs> How's that? Gorgeous. Feel free to dollop some more butter on yours. We Will have some do. extra chives here. Mm. All right. Let's see how this tastes. That is a thing of beauty. Mm. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. It tastes like a really expensive steak. It's super tender, perfectly cooked in that butter. I have to say with that little bit of Dijon, that's where it's at. Ordinary flank steak can be transformed into an extraordinary dinner. Start by cutting the steak into pieces fit for a skillet and add salt and sugar to season and help brown. Then bake the steaks in a low oven before searing them in a hot skillet to develop a delicious crust. Beat that buckle by flipping them every 60 seconds. And finally, slice thinly against the grain for maximum tenderness and serve with a flavorful compound butter. And there you have it. From our test kitchen to your home kitchen, an out-of-this-world pan-seared flank steak with mustard chive butter. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>